You've got a friend in me Liquor filled with wine and beer With personalities that are colorful indeed Glad your travels led you here Join us on our channel live See the kind of bits we do. Can't, can't get any more crude than this at this point. No. <laughs> so we are at a renovation. Yeah. Yes. 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 Isn't that awesome? Oh, it goes somewhere. <laughs> That's a fermentation room right in there. Uh, actually, you know what? You may have noticed on our uh, on our site that this we actually had this massive 32 inch uh, concrete saw in here one day. This place was a sea, it was just like oh, yeah. two inches of mud caked everywhere. Of concrete. Because yeah. that was once an exterior wall of the, of the church. Yeah, there was an original church from like 1908 or something. Yeah. A Methodist church. And then they added this section on in 91. So, uh, yeah, thick walls. Hence are uh, capitalizing on the, uh, on the, on the uh, imagery a little bit. And, you know, some people might think it's a little subversive and, well, actually, I like that. But, uh, you know, or, but really, it's not sacrilegious. I mean, so we're actually, the beers in the world are made in churches. We were talking about on the way up here, Still actually. Are. The number of bars and or breweries in churches. Like, there's one in Grimsby that's like in, in, uh, the Drunken Friar. Or Is that right? Yeah. yeah. yeah just in Grimsby, right? Yeah, Silversmith just opened up. That was used yeah. to be an antique store. And there's that one in Pittsburgh. Oh, that, Church Brewer. Yeah, I mean, that's they've, it. they've well, got Church their, Key outside of Peterborough. Too. Church Key, yeah. yes, I've seen them. Got to these buildings. There. So, so it's it's a it's a running thing. It, it's, it's there. Yeah. But the old monks and beer go hand in hand, right? In the box, of course. <laughs> but the, if you're going to be sacrilegious, my God, that one in uh, in Pittsburgh, they've got the they've got the unit tanks right up on the stake, oh, right yeah. on the <laughs> altar. <laughs> like, People go there. Yeah. If anyone's going to hell, it's them. We're we're next in line after that. Yeah, we're just playing. that's with the idea of the brimstone, fire and brimstone, the wrath of God, you know, what would Jesus drink and all that good stuff. <laughs> and you yeah. will be seeing a fire pit outside with uh, actually uh, heating up uh, heating up our uh, our beers with stones. We're absolutely doing that. Uh, we'll actually have a, have a bit of a, um, uh, we'll have a roaster as well. We're planning to, to roast our malts a little bit out there as well. So yes, yeah, so this is our brewery. Uh, we got the old brew magic here, a little dusty right now with all the construction that's been going on in here. Uh, we came up with this uh, vent hood uh, concoction. We have uh, the blower and everything is right back in behind the wall. It actually was engineered, believe it or not. It was engineered. <laughs> yeah. We put it up ourselves. And uh, we cut through the wall and this is our fermentation room up in here. <coughs> Let's go through the new filter. Light on in here. Watch your head, everybody. So this room has actually been uh, spray foam insulated. So we've got some really nice. Th we actually spent probably the most money uh, of all, right, Jason, in this yeah, room right here. Yeah, pretty much. What's nice about this room is we don't have any exterior walls. So I'm thinking from you know from the perspective of. Uh, of temperature control as much as possible. It's nice to be in the basement. Uh, we have no exterior walls. We've got the spray foam insulation and we, we clad it because we know it has to be a cleanable surface. Uh, kind of, I guess, boring brewery type stuff. But um, we do one roll of the uh, the paint roller a day. Kind of yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've been slowly getting ways at getting at that. It's gonna be painted. Uh, so you're going to be standing in a sea of uh, polypropylene fermenters here in the not too distant future, uh, Unitanks conicals, and um, and that's about it. Uh, we thought we might actually have to try to air condition this room, but we're going to try without it because I've seen I visited another uh, nano using the Brew Magic in New Brunswick recently, just uh, back in October. Uh, Shire Town Beer, great guys, <clears throat> and uh, they. They actually didn't even have a door on their fermentation room, and they were able to keep their temperature within just a few degrees, uh, except for in the summertime. So I'm like, wow, that's. I think we're perhaps overthinking this. Now, and, how many fermenters do you think you'll be able to fit in here? In the uh, seven to nine, and uh, we're on where the ceiling is higher. We're actually going to be able to fit in uh, sixty-gallon fermenters. Where the ceiling is lower we're going to have 35 gallon fermenters, one of which we have in the other room there right now. 
and then actually our conditioning tanks are corny kegs at this point. We have uh, we have uh, 30 corny kegs ready to go. So essentially, we we uh, you know hand transfer into a corny keg from the fer from fermentation and hand bomb them upstairs to our conditioning room, which we will have AC in. Of course, we're going to. Uh, we're going to be building but, that. Um, we are, we're hoping to be months, a mere months away from, uh, from actually brewing. Well, actually, we're, we're weeks away from brewing on a, on a research and development basis and uh, yeah. months away from hoping to be open. I mean, until the fire department comes on Tuesday. Oh, okay. We're going to check this ventilation system out. Talk to the engineer today. Yeah. And um, so interesting enough for <laughs> combustion air. Okay. Make up air. Yeah. He said, get it up, get it fired, and essentially he'll come here with a meter that okay. tests if it's appropriate Make sure or not. There's enough uh, make up air. That. That's right. Yeah. He doesn't think it'll be a problem. I, I highly doubt it too. This yeah. building isn't exactly airtight. Yeah. Big, big old building. Yeah. Hmm. So we've yeah. So we've got. Um, so yeah, we've got uh, exhaust over here. Just will tell you something else. Last one. Last one. Oh yeah, we were supposed to have the gas guys here to hook it up today. Uh, it's all natural gas. Um, but we decided, we believe it's going to be required, but even if it isn't required, it's kind of a prudent step. We're getting a solenoid switch on here, which will not allow us to fire any of this stuff up until we flick a switch, Say, uh, which, which fires up the... Um, the blower. Yeah, that's so. one of the interesting things is that <clears throat> really there's no governance of this. So we had TSSA stop by, and uh, essentially there's there's no code for what we're we're doing here. So um, we have an engineer, a friend of mine, who helped us out, and uh, essentially they they design what's needed and then gets put to the building department uh, and fire department, fire department, um, either well. If it's from an engineer, they should be approving it. So that's the situation we're at. We had a design by an engineer. Fire department comes in on Tuesday, and we'll know where we're at. See, I know like some of the requirements. Jason, being the architect, I talked to him about about some of the you know some of the points that I've learned from other other provinces over the years. Like I've heard from one fire department in one province that said you need a one hour burn through. Now, whether that's existing here or not, I've heard of another from another brewery using this same sort of. Um, system that they were required to have that solenoid switch. So it's kind of an idiot switch. Um, yeah, and, right. and really that's where it came from, was that other brewery. Yeah. It was in, um, in New Brunswick. Brunswick. Yeah. So we just decided, okay, maybe it isn't going to be a strict requirement in this province, but we're going to put it in anyway. Yeah. Right? We can't hear it to be over safe. Exactly. Yeah. And, uh, you know, if you, you just want to make, you want to make everybody who uh, has a, uh, a controlling intra or vote on this thing, uh, happy right from the get go, mm -hmm. right? When do you guys plan on being open? We'd like to be open by late spring. That See, that's that's the thing. All of our so per, uh, federally, provincially, uh, regionally, everyone said looks good, guys. It's all hinged on municipal. From, now, from when you guys first decided to launch, like we sat down, obviously discussed, like when. From the first step to actually doing stuff, yeah. To the point now, how long has it been? It'll be two years in March. Two years. Yeah. So it's two years of paperwork chasing, and phone yeah. calls. And well, having said that, <laughs> uh, we both have, you know, we both have uh, food on the table, pudding jobs. Yeah, so, yeah. Neither yeah. one of us are really part -time thing. <laughs> invested in this on a you know forty-hour-a-week basis. We're we, we, some, some weeks we're more on it and some weeks go by without really any thought or work on it. Yeah. So we've just been plugging away at it a little bit, bootstrapping it as we go. But there yeah. is still that process regardless. I, I, I think it'd be pretty much impossible to do it in under a year. Yeah. 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 Just somebody recently asked me that. They, they texted me and said, hey, we heard about you. We're thinking of doing something similar. I get those every now and then. Yeah. So yeah. where are you guys at with licensing and what do you think and how long does this and that and the other thing take? Well. You know what? We've been plugging away at this for just about two years, and prior to that, I was reading every book and taking every course I could take for you know another, for three years prior, three and a half years prior, and working on business plans and things. Had we have had we Jason and I had nothing better to do and worked on this every single day like a full time job, yeah, we could probably pull it together in a year. 
But and we wouldn't have the money to do it. That's right. <laughs> so it's catch uh, twenty two. <laughs> that's it. We'd be living in a park bench right now. <laughs> yeah. Do we have light in here? Oh yeah, we do. Uh, the other side, yeah. So uh, room day will actually start over here. So this uh, we wanted to uh, build. Uh, wanted to build a mill room that you know again trying to be hyper aware of uh, you know the of, of being as safe as possible so we've got a big open window here for ventilation this will be this will have a door in it we have to metal note we have to put a door in here uh, we have our grain mill here we don't want any explosions so it's going to be nice and closed up uh, we have a uh, shop back to take care of any grain dust it's not like we're probably going to blow up at uh, at the scale we're talking about but you know it makes everybody nice and happy that we're taking these precautions um, actually the motor for this just came in yesterday I didn't actually pick it up yet uh, but uh, we're gonna have a, an explosion proof uh, motor on here from for more beer where's where, where this is comes from anyway I was imagining a hand crank just, yeah, well, no, uh, <laughs> Jason's, Jason was uh, milling this stuff by hand, but he's, yeah, he's pretty like ecstatic. That. He, he's the rookie, give him that job, yeah. so I had a wrench. Here's the ratchet. Milling. Yeah, my, uh, my drill bit even, did, like, my Rod, drill didn't work. We gotta get the motor wasn't, Yeah, so Jason's there with the ratchet. It's like, right on, only 20 more pounds of grain. Keep it up. Yeah, so he's pretty happy about the, mill coming, about the motor coming in. So yeah, that's where the day is going to start, and then uh, figure I'll uh, grist whatever I need for the day, roll it down the hall, roll it into the brewery. This this will be a passage through. Where you see this fermenter here, we're going to have sort of a little corner office, just to take care of uh, bills and whatnot. And then once the fermentation is done, so you see we've kind of, uh, it's kind of an odd layout because we're in an old church and we just kind of have to use the spaces that we can we can take over because there are still other things going on in the building. There's Zumba fitness that goes on over there and there are you know, art shows and, and there are concerts, etc. So from the fermentation room, once we, uh, once we keg the beer, those again are going to be our conditioning tanks, at least for the time being. Then we go upstairs, we hand bomb them through this way, up the stairs into the conditioning room. We can show you what we have of that right now. I'm hoping that that's also our workout. I don't get to the gym too often. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, if you really want the workout, let's put them into sand key kegs. <laughs> Carry those big boys up the, up the stairs. Okay, right up this way. <clears throat> so we've got this. Um, again, the community beer works guys. They really helped us out with this idea. Uh, we tossed the idea around of, you know, are we going to buy a pre-made walk-in cooler? Are we going to, you know, spend that kind of cash? Uh, what the guys at Community Beer Works did is they discovered this, uh, this device. It's, uh, it's got a built-in thermostat. It's called a CoolBot. And basically, it's a, it's a brain. It's a brain that you, um, you tap into the, uh, to the uh, temperature controllers of any kind of a residential through-the-wall air conditioner. So we have... We've kind of done a little bit of overkill here. We have a 25,000 BTU, or 24,000 BTU AC that we're gonna plop right through this wall here. And the CoolBot, I meant to bring it, I kind of forgot it's at home. Uh, it's this device that will trick the AC into thinking that it hasn't reached its lowest temperature yet. So most residential ACs will stop, will shut off around 60 Fahrenheit. Uh, this will keep dropping because the cool bot will tell the, the onboard computer that it hasn't reached that temperature yet. But the cool bot, because of freeze up, will every now and then shut the whole system down for two minutes and then start it up again. So what will affect once we insulate all six, you know, all four walls and, and ceiling and uh, floor here, we'll, we will have made a walk-in cooler for a fraction of the cost. So that's, uh, that's the idea. In fact, it's cold enough in here right now. I think we could probably uh, condition quite nicely. But yeah, that's what we're going to do in here. So, oh. con and then from conditioning room, uh, you may have seen uh, upstairs. Yeah, it's pretty neat. This cool bot. Yeah, yeah the cool bot's pretty. Community cool. Beer Works is using it very successfully. Yep, they've got two rooms. Yeah. For the using it. And then from there, that's where that's where we'll do all of our conditioning and keg, and then up to the concert space. So as I mentioned, our our plan is to sell as much um, of our product at the 
at the retail uh, level as possible. Any slide through there? Yeah. I'm still. Speak yourself. So we're going to have a couple of uh, Micromatic uh, powers um, coming out of here. So um, I'm going to be doing the draft uh, system install ourselves. Now this is the short term, the hand bombing of kegs and uh, whatnot up here. Uh, eventually down the road, it would be real nice and sweet to have the glycol deck and, uh, and install that and be able to just have the unitank uh, uh, serving bright tanks downstairs and be able to pump that up here. But for the time being, if we're dealing with cornies, um, we're going to be just hand bombing them up here as we need them and tie them into the, into the draft system. And we, uh, yeah, so we have the, the concerts up here and hopefully, I expect that we'll, we'll have a hard time to keep up, to be quite honest, with the demand uh, of, of draft at these shows. We do also plan to be getting, uh, we've actually had quite a lot of interest from local, uh, local pubs, a few local uh, establishments here in Ridgeway and Crystal Beach, which is just uh, two kilometers down the road. They, um, they're quite eager to get their hands on some of these beers. Um, we're pretty excited to bring them to them and we're gonna do that in kegs. So we are gonna, because one of the things that I always have been interested in doing and probably you as well, Jason, is when I go somewhere, I end up in a, ta in a tavern or a pub and I say, what's local? Oh, for sure. You know, and, uh, and, and, I, and if it's local as in, you know, a stone's throw, then I'm really interested. So we definitely want to get the beers out um, in, in the keg formats. And then we're going to have the various bottle formats as well. The, you know, the typical growlers and bombers and pot stoppers. Yeah. Cool. I'm not going to go very far in a, in a 40 liter. No. Oh, and that's the other thing. No. Our licensing, um, we have applied for Tidehouse licensing, which will allow us to exclusively sell our beers. Yeah. We're not planning to do that, but what we have been um, jockeying around is downstairs, uh, we do a, a, a future eventuality is to create an eatery bistro slash tap room. So downstairs would be the exclusive domain of Brimstone. Whereas up here, because we do have a different dynamic, and you're right, we're not going to be able to serve everybody um, based on 40, uh, batch, uh, 40 uh, liters at a time. Here we'll have a diversity. So yes, we'll be we'll be able to do you know the Tide House uh, exclusivity, but we're not going to we're not necessarily planning to do it as a business model. Uh, you know, Something we did talk about doing up here is, is may or may not we'll continue to evaluate it, but is maybe just doing the uh, on the craft beers from all over Ontario. And I would be so excited about that. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, we have to see. It depends on the type of show as well. Right? So. Yeah, I hate to mention them again, but like the Merchant Ale House does that, right? Like it's all craft. You, Are you, they only yeah. craft? Yeah, yeah, you walk in, it's craft or like to that level. Like you to do walk level, in yeah. and it's always funny. The guy comes in, can I have a Canadian? Mm -hmm. You're like, no. Yeah. What do you mean? <laughs> well, yeah. The old time hockey yell is kind of like Canadian. Yeah. <laughs> and then, in the end, they just say, "Hey, well, well no, they, try they, they, they try it." Yeah, you know, and then they, and then they, but, but, yeah, they, the merchants just built this yep. reputation over the years. Right? Yeah, it's so that's what it takes. Eh? It's over time. Like, is there anything there that's not craft? I don't drink there. Yeah, I'm trying to, trying to think. <laughs> no. The last time I drank there was when I lived in St. Catharines. Yeah. I mean, I don't well, know. you know what? I mean, I love that. I, I've actually done that before. I. I had a restaurant out uh, in Prince Rupert, and um, we did exclusively carry craft beers. And I would say 90% of those craft beers were from BC. Yeah. Um, and I was educating the staff, teaching them about beer styles, just a little bit, you know, uh, but they, they got excited about it. So they were, they took pride in being able to recommend similar styles of beer because yeah. they were taking pride in their sort of that educational process. Mm -hmm. uh, so somebody would come up and say, hey, I want a Miller Lite. Well, we don't have Miller Lite. However, we have these three lagers and pilsners that you might be interested in. This one's a little more malty and this one, you know. Yeah, exactly. And it was, it was very interesting to see how that was playing out with the staff. So if we were able, if we were able to, you know, capture some of that here, at the sanctuary, I'd love to see it go down that road. Yeah. Cool. And then you become known as, okay, you guys are 
great beer venue as well. You're a good beer venue. You know, yeah. you're not, uh, yes, you, you realize that this is going to cost a little bit more. Um, because craft beer is made in a whole lot smaller batches than, than the big guys. But at the end of the day, you know, it shows that you, you, you take a stand in, in for quality as opposed to just revenue. Yeah. Uh, like, that's exactly the model that they, they have followed. And they're just a successful example of what you're talking about. Yeah. And the guys are can you pay a bit more, but the thing is, is when you have a, a pint of, of old time hockey and, and, and John tells you it's 7%, mm. and then you get drunk off four pints of beer, and you're like, there's no way that's seven percent. And he's yeah, like, yeah. it's seven <laughs> percent. <Yeah. laughs> yeah. And then suddenly, no one ever minds paying the extra money for it, right? right. Yeah. So I mean, like you guys know and say, and there's a there's a time and place for yeah. for a cold Corona, you know, and there's a time and a place for uh, for just about any style of beer. Mm -hmm. um, and there are many, many, many places where you can get those kinds of beers, right? There are only a handful of places that say, all right, this is what we offer. Especially in this region, you would, oh. be, you would be something completely different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what we're trying to do with the music venue as well. So if they're playing to see good music, you know, I think they'll, I think they'll pay to see it or drink good beers too, yeah. right? And really, that's what the rest of the sanctuary is about as well. Yeah. I mean, it's about... Uh, it's about it's about art in every respect. You know, we we have you know the paintings on the wall. You'll see sculpture exhibits. You will, and, and, and to be honest, uh, the art of beer I yeah. think is important uh, an important tie-in. Uh, so yes, yeah, so we've actually got a bit of a uh, <coughs> hop farm going on. I do. It's personal. It's a personal garden. Many neighbors um, think it's a uh, lightning field. Yeah, lightning. Yeah, lightning grid. <laughs> Many cops think it's, think it's something else, but uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's, uh, I actually ordered 150 rhizomes today, and I ordered uh, Chinook and uh, Willamette and uh, Cascades. Now, if I could get my hands on an illegal Simcoe, I would, because uh, you know I, I am a big fan of the pine. I'm a big fan of that piney flavor. See, I hate Simcoe hops. <laughs> hey, yeah. See, I, I mean, I like Simcoe blends. I will, I, I, I agree with you that, you know, to try to spread that out a little bit, but I am the, I, I would like to lick the bark of a pine tree uh, with, uh, and have beer all over it. They just need the beer so syrupy too. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so yeah, so we do have a bit of a hop farm. It's called uh, Lowland Fields. That's what we've dubbed it. It's part of Brimstone and it's in my backyard. So yes, we try to make it sound all, all more than it is, but it's uh, we've got a we've got a trellis system that we put up. We put up 20 posts. We've got 15 feet in height, uh, and uh, we've churned the ground. And uh, have to get a whole bunch of. I was going to ask you. We have to find some manure. We want to put some manure on there pretty soon. And uh, yeah. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna we're not going to be able to supply all of our. Our brewing needs, but because we have engaged in you know a contract with a hop uh, broker as well, but uh, you know it'll definitely help us out, and it helps keep it local. You know, we want to we want to do that as much as possible. Uh, we're I'm not a farmer beyond uh, beyond hops, and we have hops around the sanctuary here as well. We grew some Zeus Real hops nice. last year. Yeah, nice hops this year. Actually, for a first year yield, yeah. I was quite impressed. For sure. And the cones are massive on those things. So, you know, this year we expect them to come up even better. They're in my freezer right now, nicely dehydrated. Uh, so they'll be in our pots in too. Nice. 